I want to talk about a lot of stuff today. Of course, yeah, I mean, I, I'm anxious, as I know all of you are. I'm anxious to see what news breaks today. I mean, this show, this Sam Roberts show that I keep hearing about, keeps breaking news every day. Of course, this was the first, the first radio show to discuss the Donald, discussed the Donald, to discuss the Donald running for president. We'll talk about that a little bit today. Of course, now everybody's talking about it, so I can't spend the whole show talking about that. Taylor Strecker from Wake Up With Taylor is going to be here. She did the show when it was the Friday show a few times. She was part of the big interview I did with uh, X-Pac a few months back. Very, very talented lady. Fun to talk to, so she'll be here. Um, Stuff going on on Netflix I want to talk about. Speaking of Netflix, by the way, if you want to call the show, you know you can get in touch with us. 866 969-1969. The phone number is 866-969-1969. Call us right now while you can still get through. And, of course, tweet along. Let's get those Twitter numbers up today. Today is the day to do it. Follow SR Show SXM on Twitter. That's SR Show SXM. Paul tweets out photos of everything going on in the studio, videos of everything we're talking about, and... uh, Updates, all of you Sam Roberts Show listeners, on what's going on in uh, the life, the universe, as it pertains to Sam Roberts Show throughout the day. So uh, follow along at SR Show SXM on Twitter. And again, call up now, 866-969-1969. That's 866-969-1969. Because I was uh, perusing through today's newspaper... It's full of information. If you ever get a chance to look at a newspaper, it's actually full of information. People writing it, it's incredible. This guy, Robert Rourke, he wrote a a column about uh, binge-watching television. And he kind of took this claim that it it could be, could be. That's the thing about that. I I can't stand when people write opinion-based columns. And they kind of, they kind of take an opinion, but it's just a, this might happen. This could happen if this trend continues. Maybe what we're seeing is it's never just, look, here's what it is. Here's what I think is going to happen, and here's why. This is what my opinion is. I don't get wishy-washy on Sam Roberts' show, and I don't expect people whose job it is to present their opinion to be wishy-washy either. But Robert Rourke, um, he wrote this article about binge-watching TV and how successful... Netflix is, and it, he, he writes, it appears that with House of Cards and Orange is the New Black, the binge viewing has had its moment. Um, you know, he talks about how successful all these binge shows have been and, and how everybody's talking about them and all this stuff. Uh, but then he starts getting into Game of Thrones and Empire and shows that are on traditional TV and how successful those shows have been. Um, and he says... Uh, Success that everybody could embrace. Why? Because if you made sure you were home on Sunday to see Cersei's Walk of Shame, or on Wednesday to see Cookie claw her way back into the hip-hop music world, you were part of it. With a Netflix series, there is no shared experience. This whole article is kind of a, a, a an ode to a time when everybody would run home sit in front of their TVs all at the same time, and then wake up the next day, and we'd all just get around the water cooler and talk about what happened. Oh, did you see Gilligan last night? Yeah, who would have thought? The skipper hit him with his hat. Oh, I know. I thought that they were going to get out, but the coconut phone on the boat, I could have sworn they were going to call for help. Yeah, but that professor, sometimes I wonder what exactly he's a professor in. I'm glad we all had that shared experience and got to watch together. I don't know what... The guy who wrote this column is thinking, and if, if you disagree, then you can call up at 866-969-1969. But I'm sitting there, I'm looking, he's talking about Game of Thrones, he's talking about Empire. I don't watch Game of Thrones, but I watched every episode of Empire. And I can't even begin to tell you what day of the week that show was on. I watch Silicon Valley, the HBO show, I watch every episode. No clue what time it airs. All of these shows that I watch, the minute I turn on my TV... You go straight to either the on-demand menu or the app, the HBO Go, or whatever it is. I watched the Empire on the Fox app. Nobody is having a shared experience. 
Nobody's sitting there going and saying, okay, it's Sunday night. That's my Game of Thrones night. I watch that show Girls Mondays at like 6.30. Why? Because I can watch it whenever I want because it's all available. It's not just Netflix. It's not just, okay, you know, here's the one thing that you can binge watch because everything else we just watch on traditional TV. You don't watch anything. The only reason to have cable anymore is because you need a cable login to access most of these apps. I wish that this dude who wrote this article would just realize, okay, times have changed, things are different, and people's viewing habits have altered. It's not a matter of, oh, remember when it was better? Remember when there was a shared experience? Nobody was. Nobody wakes up the next day and talks about a show. If anything, people get pissed about spoilers, even though technically the show already aired on its on its on its on, on the night that it's supposed to air. Everybody saw it, right? Because it's it's Sunday night's over, so everybody saw it. Unless it's like the finale of Breaking Bad, where you know it's going to be everywhere and you have to watch it. You never watch things as they're on. Let's go to uh, Jason. Jason, welcome to Sam Roberts Show. Hey, Sam, I don't disagree with you a lot because you are a professional broadcaster. That's right. You know what you're talking about. I do. But a lot of shows, a lot of shows I do like to watch live, and I think a lot of people do, for one of two things. A, sports, you can't really tape them because you know what's going to happen later. And B, the Twitter, the Twitter universe. A lot of times I like to sit down and watch shows that I know that are popular and get on Twitter and make fun of it or... You know, see what other people are saying, you know, as things are going on. Yeah, that is, well, and that goes with embracing technology, not being afraid of it, but sports is the only thing that's keeping television alive. You can't exactly watch sports on demand. It has to be, it's on when it's on. You know, sports is going to go the way of MLB Network and NHL Network and all that. But on Monday morning, people were not sitting having conversations about Game of Thrones. I'm talking about two days ago, Monday morning. Is the big finale of Game of Thrones. Everybody heard about it. But every conversation that I heard about that show was not, oh, can you believe what happened? Let's discuss it. Let's talk about the plot points. You know, like you do with Sopranos. When Sopranos was on, you'd always talk about it. It was on on Sunday. On Monday morning, you'd be talking about Sopranos. But that was 15 years ago, 10 years ago, however long ago it was. People weren't sitting there having conversations about the plot points of Game of Thrones, the only conversation that anybody was having about Game of Thrones were people that were pissed off at spoilers for a show that already aired. People were annoyed that newspapers had headlines on the front page about the show that was supposedly already aired because nobody watches it when it airs. People watch it in their free time. People watch it whenever. Well, I I was going to wait till Wednesday to watch it because that's when I watch it. Uh, Let's go to John... What's going on, John? Howdy. Uh, I'm just saying I'm a truck driver, Mm -hmm. and there are certain shows I like to watch, like The Walking Dead, things like that. And when you're a truck driver, you can't watch those things. Right. You're not always in a truck stop that has cable. And uh, Netflix just revolutionized entertainment, that you can watch it in your free time, like you just said. Uh when you work work a 12-hour day and you finally get that two hours at the end, and you might not be able to catch it on TV, but you can yeah, like that's the watch thing. it anytime. There's so many good shows on that people only, yeah. you only have, everybody who's actually making a living right now only has, like you said, an hour or two at the end of the day where they can actually sit down and watch TV. And beyond that, they're passed out of sleep or they have to wake up early to work all day the next day. So when you've only got two hours, one hour, however long it is, to watch TV, nobody's scrolling through channels to see what's on. It's like, okay, I got my shows. I know exactly what I want to watch. And I'm going to be able to watch the best shows. I think it's um, TV. It's slowly starting to decline to what, like you were saying, uh, sports is the only major thing on anymore. It's the only thing to watch live. Uh, exactly. It's getting to the point of with uh, uh, DVR and TiVo being able to record their shows. It's the same thing as Netflix. Yeah, yeah. It always, thanks, buddy. It, it makes everything exactly. It, it makes everything just easier. It makes it easier, and it gives you the opportunity to watch stuff. And I just I can't stand when I read stuff like this because instead of a guy who's got a job writing for a newspaper, instead of this guy saying, 
let me write an article about the way technology is changing and just everybody realizing that this is the way entertainment's going and it's actually for the better because it's making it so the shows that are of the highest quality can get in front of eyes. Instead of doing that and just acknowledging that he's living through a change in something, he's afraid. This isn't what it was like when I was growing up. So he's got to figure out what's wrong with it because he's afraid of the fact... He thinks... And the end of this article, he writes, uh, uh, Netflix is going to have to continue rolling out all 13 episodes of their projects at once. The streaming service may end up a victim of its own success. Which is the most bullshit sentence to end an article like that with I've ever heard. They Netflix was the first to do this, but the only shows anybody talks about anymore are either available on some kind of app or only available on an app. HBO believes in it so much that they've launched HBO Now, which is, I guess, like HBO Go, except you don't actually have to have a cable subscription. This guy, Robert whatever, Rourke or whatever his name is, has got to understand that if you're not realizing what's happening, you're just letting things pass you by. And that's what this guy's doing. He's completely letting this pass him by because there's no way, there is no feasible way that anybody is going to go back to watching TV on somebody else's schedule. Why would you? It's a taped show. I go over to my parents' house for dinner, and my dad goes, you know what happened on last season of Mad Men? I go, don't ruin it. Don't spoil it. He's like, it happened a year and a half ago. I'm like, don't spoil it. You don't know, people don't even have conversations. Do you know how many pre conversations you have to have before you can actually have a conversation about a show? Like, you have to sit there and go, no, wait, can I talk about this? Can I talk about that? How far along are you? Nobody watches TV at the same time anymore. Husbands and wives don't watch TV at the same time anymore. Let's go to uh, Fergie in Canada. Hey, Sam, how's it going? Good, buddy. Listen, I think uh, you nailed it on the the head there. Right, right on the that. dick. You were, naming, you were naming the shows, and the point is, you named all good shows. I don't think whatever form it comes out on, people will watch good shows, whether it's on Netflix or on cable or Hulu or HBO Now. But that's but even think, why, you know, even on Sirius, it's like, like I'm well aware that I'm talking to a lot of people right now, and, and I'm talking to you guys who call in, and the live audience counts for a lot. But you know what else counts for a lot? The fact that this show is also on demand, so nobody feels like, okay, if I'm not sitting in front of a radio or in front of a computer at noon Eastern every day, I'm going to miss Sam Roberts. Like, no, that's not the way content works anymore. It has to be available on your time. I would go fucking insane. If I was doing this for two hours a day and it just existed in that two hours and then it was gone. It's 2015. Nobody, it, it, that doesn't exist anymore. I think he's just trying to cling on to his childhood. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and trying, to, trying to realize that technology has passed him by. He doesn't really get what's going on. So instead of embracing it and just writing something about how, you know, this isn't my thing. I don't understand this and I hope somebody explains it to me. He's arguing it. He's fighting against it. And it makes no sense to fight against stuff like this because it's happening, and it makes sense, and it's better for everybody. Austin, you're on Sam Roberts' show. Samuel Brand Muffins, buddy. What's going on? How you doing, pal? Hey, man. Well, you know, I was just looking at this guy. It's like, obviously, he's behind on the times. I think I've had a DVR since 2006. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, so I haven't been watching shows in real time in that amount of time. But the other thing about it is, is that, you know, one thing you consider is that the providers themselves, even terrestrial television, CBS, ABC, mm -hmm. people like that, have stepped up their content and started creating stuff that's way better than stuff we had prior to on-demand services or TiVo because, you know, they can now put money into that, and they, have, and they count those numbers in the, uh, in the actual uh, ratings of the show. Yeah, and you have to. Like, there was a time, like I said, with Gilligan's Island, when that shitty show was on, there wasn't, what are you going to change the channel to? They knew, the, the, the companies knew, they're like, look, people are going to watch TV. They're, whatever we put on, they're going to watch something. So all we need to do is make a show that's better than the four other shows that are on right now. Now, because people can watch whatever they want, whenever they want, it has to be something that actually is somewhat substantial. Absolutely. I think it's the same thing that's, uh, that's really hurting the movie industry right now. I mean, you can see stuff like Jurassic Park just had this huge opening. Yeah. Really big movies that come out. 
where they're still able to sustain that revenue. But it's, it's very limited things. It's stuff generally that touches a nostalgic point or is kind of a culture point where people will still go out and see that. But for the most part, you know, individuals, much like the, the, the problems the music industry is having, people want content now. Right. You know, that, that's, you know, that's yeah, basically as, what killed the record industry in its, in its former form. As far as, it's going to continue to go that way. As far as buying a movie ticket, people will see three things. Dinosaurs, superheroes, or The Rock. Anything else, no thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, buddy. Okay, Sam. I'll talk to you later. Uh, Sean, you're on Sam Roberts' show. Hey, you got a really good point about people not watching live television. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm 28 years old, 29 next month, mm -hmm. and I've been downloading television from Torrent since Arrested Development first started airing. And not even just downloading television, the fact that it was available online streaming back then. Yeah, and, and that's where I think, I think TV is doing better now, because TV realized the same thing that happened to music is happening to them, where if you don't make this stuff, the only reason anybody's making any money in music is because Steve Jobs was like, okay, we need to make paying for downloadable music as easy as stealing it. Like, before, when it was either, I'm going to steal this TV, or I have to wait until it's on Wednesday night at 7.30, I, let me just steal it. It'll be a lot easier. It's so much easier to steal it, um, which, is why I'm hope which is why I'm hoping that, like, uh, like how you know how music, like, if it's from Louisiana, it has a certain sound, or if it's from New York, it's got a certain sound. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that this is the next wave of things, where people aren't going to have this, um, you know, platform to just sell it immediately, where they're going to have to start actually being from their own town and start having their own voices where you start seeing these little pockets of people developing new material like the like uh, like kind of like the return of local television like NBC New York has shows in New York and NBC New Orleans has these New Orleans local shows exactly hmm. Which, and, and because the technology is becoming so easy for us to use we are going to you know step away from these nationally syndicated things and start you know uh, watching local stuff that's like interesting. That's yeah, interesting. It's totally, it's totally going to happen like that. And the second thing, uh, yeah. what is your uh, opinion on uh, the Shockmaster? Shockmaster, uh, great stormtrooper, average wrestler. <laughs> All right. All right, care. buddy. I'll talk to you later. Uh, yeah, and I think actually the best point Sean made is about stealing being so easy. If anything, sh Netflix and binge watching is saving television because at least Netflix is easy to get to you can watch it whenever you want if the if it was if the options were either I find out what time and channel my show is on or I just steal it online people would be stealing online in so many greater numbers than they are now Netflix actually gave people a spot to be like okay well I'll, I'll pay if it's right there and I can do it whenever I want Andrew you're on Sam Roberts show Sam Roberts, pleasure and an honor to speak to a professional broadcaster such as yourself. I can only imagine. <laughs> uh, I wanted to bring up another point specifically about Netflix and these other services. What they're doing, which is something that I recently did, is they're opening up an entire new audience to shows that have been off the air for a very long time. Mm -hmm. For example, like I just watched on Netflix the entire 11 uh, seasons of MASH. And, you know, that ended in 1982 or 83, and I, I just watched the entire thing. And it's really, like, you can find all these shows that went off. Now, granted, Gilligan's Island, like you said, okay, it's a pretty shitty show. Very shitty, yeah. But there are other shows that you, you know, have Dude, were on for years before we were even born. I'm not going to turn on... I'm not going to turn on NBC and watch an episode of SVU that does not have Detective Stabler. But you know what I will do? Go on Netflix and rewatch the Stabler years. Exactly. <laughs> All right, buddy. I'll tell you. I mean, it's a great point. You're actually finding eyes for these shows that, like, you'd never air reruns of certain shows anymore. There's only so many slots on a channel, but the fact that now you can actually get eyes on them uh, is pretty big. John, welcome to Sam Roberts' show. You there, John? Hello? John? I mean, it's you, the guy that just said who. Oh, sorry, Sean in Canada. Oh, Jesus. 
call. Yeah, yeah. All these guys do. They call up. They just want to hear their name on the radio. They know Sam Roberts is the last of the Mohicans as far as professional broadcasters well, I, I goes. Want, I want to talk about the WWE Network. Well, I was going to... Really wait, wait, wait. Out. I need Paul to understand that he did something wrong. You said his name was John. His name is Sean, and he just wants primetime Sam Roberts to refer to him as such. I need you to listen more closely. Go ahead, John. All right, buddy. So, yeah, no. I, I Watching WWE Network, finally you got subscribed to it. And who do I see the first night on there? Yours, you yourself, talking about something to do with the wrestling. Bro. Fantastic. I'm on top of it. I understand the future. Streaming the, fir- the the big first, I don't know if it's the first, but it's the first major live 24-hour-a-day streaming network, and you can see yours truly plastered right on the TV screen. Well, that that tells you, with all the geniuses in Hollywood and everywhere else, That's right. that uh, Vinnie Mac is a little ahead of the time. Sure, they may only have a million subscribers right now. 1.3. But, uh, 1.3 million at 9.99 a month, but here in Canada, it's 11.99. And it's, uh, it's it's starting to actually take over. You go on a social media and you kind of joke around about being trapped by the WWE network, and you get about a hundred posts of another hundred other people who are saying, "Yeah, my wife's ready to leave me because we're watching wrestling." <laughs> it really is. That's the other and, thing. Yeah, go ahead. It's it's sort of like uh, I don't even have Netflix. I maybe I have Netflix. I don't even know. But all I know is I can sit down and watch the Monday Night Wars. In over and over. Different versions right now. Yeah. Because last night it was all about Russo. The night before it was about Ric Flair. They're playing the same thing over and over, and they're trapping us watching their show. Well, it will. Uh, thank- all in the bottom of the screen, they're talking uh, about what's coming up next. And, and you right just stick time. around. Thanks, John. You just stick around, and you stick around. And it is it is the type of thing where if you're an OCD person or you just have an obsession, you just can stick to one thing. And maybe that's better. John in Alabama. What's going on, John? The great primetime Sam Roberts. God, I feel so honored just talking to you. I would think that that would be how you would feel. I mean, just even listening to you is awesome. It's got to be amazing. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, who's on the show this week? I mean, what's, you know, on the uh, Sam Roberts extravaganza show, you know, closer to the end of the week? I mean, what's going on? Well, a lot of stuff is happening. And, uh, of course, as I said, Taylor Strecker is going to be here in a little bit. Uh Jackie Moran's going to be in studio later this week. A comedian named Evan Wexel is going to be here later this week. Still a lot going on. And, of course, we'll be live uh, through Friday, as always. John in Arizona. That's Chuck in Arizona. Uh, are you serious? What is everybody's name John today? Every time I pick up a phone, it's some guy who says, my name is not John. Paul, I need people to get the credit that they deserve. They get very, very, very excited, justifiably so, getting to talk to Sam Roberts, and all they want to do is hear their name on the radio, and you are not allowing that to happen. I need you to get the corn cobs out of your ears. Go ahead, John. Okay, it's Chuck. Whatever. You're the great Sam Roberts of New York City. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Uh, There's a bad thing about Netflix. They're going to be like Hulu. They're going to start putting uh, commercials in front of the shows. Is that true? Yes, they just reported that like last week or something. Well, I mean... I guess it's inevitable because it's like it, any of these services, once they've got you, they've got you. I don't think people are going to unsubscribe to Netflix. As long as they're not interrupting shows, I guess I don't even mind if there's commercials before the show. As long as they're not interrupting shows to add commercials in, I think it'll be okay. Joe in Arkansas. Sam Roberts, my favorite transracial professional broadcaster, sir. Privilege to talk to you. That's right. And quite frankly, I was transracial before it was cool. And I'm the first ever <laughs> trans species broadcaster as well. And, and amazing you are. Thank you. Uh, uh, I, I just was calling because I heard you talking about Netflix and how it's the wave of the future and everything else. And now I need to go over to the side of XM, Sirius XM Radio and their webcasting and that piece of crap <laughs> uh, app that they have out there it does it does uh, i've been i've been a subscriber since 2003 on xm radio and as soon as you guys came out with the internet stuff when they started charging for it yeah i was on board because i'd listen on my you know i touch whatever i had you want to laugh about they did an upgrade and then they it, it quit working it does blow my mind that there's not a higher concentration on the app because you hear every day that somebody's having a problem with the SiriusXM app. And in my mind, the only way the company succeeds, and I think the company will succeed, but the only way the company succeeds is with a strong online listenership because that's the way everything is going to be online. Well, I would well, hope 
that, that that there's there's someone getting paid a lot more than me working behind the scenes at perfecting that app. I, I, I can what? I can only hope that. Otherwise, I'm wasting my time. Well, I understand you thinking that they're going to succeed because they gave you a great opportunity, and, and you will rise above it as That's they right. fall, I'm sure. Because uh, me, as a subscriber, again, of more than 12 years, I'm, I'm a little bitter. Mm -hmm. I'm a little angry. Cancel that Internet stuff. So I'm already drifting away from you guys, and they try to keep me with some $25 deal till November. You know what I'm happened? Not so sure I'm, gonna, I'm not so sure I'm going to stay on it. I'm being honest with you. As a 12-year customer, you need to let the upper the ups know not happy. Here's what's going to happen. There's a bunch of people that are unhappy. Then... They debut the brand new Daily Sam Roberts show, and just when you thought you were out, they my pulled you definitely. back in. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yes. I see what you're saying now. That's right. Thank All you, right, Joe. Sam. I'll look forward to it. Thank All you. right. I'll talk to you later. Let's go to Jake in L.A. What's going on, Jake? Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, I was just calling that last caller was talking about the Netflix ads. Yeah. Apparently, it's just going to be like internal Netflix things. Like, they're not actually doing... Oh, just promos Netflix for the shows coming up. Yeah, like the new orange, the new black, and all that stuff. So yeah, I'm fine with that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, though, that that'll just be like a test thing, and eventually they'll start adding sponsors and all that stuff. But even even so, as long as they're not interrupting the shows, I don't give a shit. Tony in Dallas, welcome to Sam Roberts' show. It's actually Johnny. You're kidding me. Are you kidding me right now? Absolutely. Johnny wants to talk to me, Paul, and he wants me to call him Johnny because that's his name, not Tony. Hey. Tony, go ahead. Hey, Sammy. Hey, I was going to say, uh, uh, local news is pretty much the only thing we watch that's live. But aside from that, we're going to get rid of all of our U-verse, everything, just because we got to pay for these packages that we only watch maybe eight channels out of the 150 channels you got to pay for. And it's got to be absurd, channels. too, when you realize how much you're paying, and then you, oh, you realize yeah. what you're watching. The local news is such a fucking joke that the fact that you would pay anything to watch local news is, is exactly. beyond me. Yeah, that's why we're going to jump out. And, uh, but I'll stick with you on the show. I was out until uh, you guys started your own show there, Mr. Sammy. That's right. I'm sticking back in. You pull me back in, buddy. Let Sirius XM know. I appreciate it. Let's go to Steven in Buffalo. Primetime Sam Roberts. How are you? Fabulous. Have you heard of uh, Twitch TV? Yeah, didn't uh, Twitch TV is a live streaming network. Didn't that mainly start as a, a network online that would show like video game play? Yeah, like people stream video games for money. A lot of professional game players do it. Hell, yeah. Amazon bought it for a billion dollars. A billion with a B. Yeah, that's fucking nuts. But, I mean, Amazon's actually got, uh, what's it called? Amazon's got transparent and everything. Amazon's actually a competitor. Is that what they're going to do? They're going to try to create, like, a live network to show their shows? I believe so, maybe. Ah. That kind of technology. Well, it's a good buy, then. Thank you, Steve. And, of course, uh, speaking of video games and stuff, E3 is happening. There's this great video, and you have to watch the article that accompanies it. I love anytime anybody screws up during a presentation in front of a big audience. Uh, Sony had a big failure moment. I'll talk about that in a second. Let me go to uh, Larry. What's going on, pal? Sam Roberts. I uh, can see the journalist in you is rebelling against the um, state of journalism today. Well, all these old people, Larry. Like it's what I don't mind people of a certain age. I don't mind if you're an older guy, but if you're an older guy, you have to be aware of the world that's changing constantly around you, and you have to stop clinging on to the fucking dinosaur technology and and stop thinking that everybody misses the days when it would be Thursday at eight o'clock and we'd all watch Friends together. It's ridiculous. Well, it is ridiculous, and it's, it really is an apples and oranges situation because there was there was no choice whatsoever in media, and television actually went off the air at night and came back on the air in the morning to watch the Today Show. Yeah, I remember, and you know, it was better when there was nothing on television at 3 o'clock in the morning. Then we could all get to sleep on time, and it was a great shared experience. We all had the same bedtime, and just just shut up and let realize that things are different, and they're supposed to be different, and they're evolving in a positive way. Of course they're evolving in a positive way, but what matters... And what you're proving every day is that content is king. That's it. That's it. Doesn't it doesn't matter what you can stream. I'm sorry, Sam, I interrupted you, but it doesn't matter what you stream. Nobody's screaming for the next episode of Lily Hammer and apologies to little Stevie. But gosh, Amani, they're screaming for all of the great content like your show. That's, that's right. The point. It's about content. 
and they have to roll with the times. It doesn't matter how much it's available. If it's crap, it's still going to be crap. Binge watch or wait. And I think that's a, and that's a great point, Larry. And I think that's something that pro- content providers are terrified of because forever. It's the cable companies or the big companies. It's the bosses and the conglomerates that have had all the power. Now that people are getting to choose what they watch, watch people who create content are the ones that are in charge of their destiny. You know what I mean? Like even if if a company lays you off and you're a content creator, you can find a way to get your shit in front of somebody's eyes. And once people realize that they have the power to do that. Uh, it's over for these content providers that are trying to just control everything. Joseph in Canada. Sammy Wombat Man. How you doing, man? Hey, buddy. I, uh, I, the only problem I have with being able to stream anything on Netflix is it doesn't matter how hard I search, I do not see a show about Sam Roberts transitioning into a wombat. People are afraid, Why you know? Is that? I mean, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad you asked, and I think that's a question on a lot of people's minds. Uh, it's still a very taboo topic. You know, we're living in a post-intersex, post-intergender, post-intersexual, post-interracial world, but we're just not accepting people who uh, identify themselves as interspecies. Now, do I look like a human being? You goddamn bet your bottom dollar I look all man if you're looking right at me. But at the end of the day, I, I identify myself as a wombat, and, and I would hope... That soon we'll get to the point in our history where where we're kind of more accepting of that. Warren in Missouri. Yo, Sam Roberts. What's up, pal? Um, just talking about the old uh, online streaming thing. Mm-hmm. One point is, you know, you talked about stealing and things. Yeah. Uh, Netflix is actually easier than stealing because you don't have to like put any files anywhere. You right, you don't have to figure out how it works. BitTorrent took me exactly. forever to figure anything out. Also, uh, as a person who is uh, blind, has no sight whatsoever, mm-hmm. a lot of these TV providers with their U-verse and you know, whatever else they use, their, their uh, systems aren't exactly accessible to us. So Netflix, you know, and other apps is... Right, so you just so do that, that and it's awesome. easy, and you, and you get your shit, and it's convenient. And Nathan, you're on Sam Roberts' show. Hey, Sam Roberts, how you doing? Good, pal. Awesome. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to take away your thunder because I heard you mention something about Sony with E3. No, go ahead. But uh, I, I know I did read an article about how they announced with the PlayStation TV that they're actually going to start um, rolling out how you can pay for channels that you want. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's I think it's something. Yeah, you're right, buddy. Thanks. I think it's something that a lot of providers are realizing they're doing, and and Sony, and uh, what's that other company? The Slingbox. Slingbox did it as well. All these companies are making deals with networks so that you can pay per network. So now Sony has announced at E3, which is going on right now. It's the big electronic video game expo that happens every year. Sony has announced that through PlayStation TV, you'll be able to subscribe to networks and watch it right on the PlayStation. You don't have to have a cable subscription to watch these shows anymore, which is a step in the right direction, definitely. they got this, Sony is going nuts. I mean, they're trying to get exclusivity on Call of Duty downloads that they're announcing. I can't... I can't play the Call of Duty games. They're way too complicated for me, but it's the biggest thing in the world. The reason that I brought up Sony, though, was because it was making me die laughing. There's an article, I think it's on Engadget, um, that talks about Sony's epic fail at the biggest video game event of the year. They were announcing this video game, and what happens at E3 is these video game companies, they come out, and they show their new games. And literally, it's it's a crowd full of people. There's thousands and thousands of people that show up to this stuff. And they show up and they are marveling at gameplay examples. It's just video of what the video game will look like when you play it. And people freak out over it. And I get it. It's, it's the stuff that these guys love. And... And the video games do look amazing now, especially comparatively. Like, just each year, they get better and better and better. But the reason it was so great, anytime electronics go wrong, especially at, a, at an electronics event, I love it. Like, when, when Apple did the event 
I don't know, six months ago, and somebody was demonstrating how their app worked on the iPad, and it had a, an autocorrect error. They autocorrected the wrong word, and it just made no sense, and the guy panicked. It was great. I loved it. Anytime a live event goes wrong like that, especially when they're displaying technology that's not working right, it's amazing. So they're showing this game, and they put the game on the big screen, and they go through this video, and it's one of these games where it's it's like a video that morphs right into the gameplay. So the video kind of stops, but you don't acknowledge the video stopping, and then you get control of the character that's on the screen. So the whole video goes through, and it's like, I don't know, a couple of minutes. And then the character is just standing there on the screen. And all these people are sitting around waiting for this character to start playing. Again, it's on Engadget. I think we'll find the article. Did you find it? We'll post it on SR Show SXM on Twitter because I've been watching it all day. Just because you know what's going on behind the scenes. Maybe this is me. Maybe I'm strange. Because I was sitting there visualizing people panicking and just getting a kick out of it. But uh, the character is just standing still. On screen, nothing's happening with it. The rest of the game is kind of moving, but nothing's happening. The problem was the controllers weren't working. The system, he had to restart the system, and the whole video started again. So the thing that they just saw starts playing again. Everybody has to, uh, what's going on? And the guy finally was able to start moving his character around. But anytime you get a room full of people that have flown from all over the world to just marvel at technology and it just doesn't work, the same way it's not going to work when you get it into your house, and you're going to have to call somebody who's going to ask you if you restarted your machine or if you plugged and unplugged your box or whatever they're going to ask you. When you get to see that in person, even at the demo level, and nothing makes me happier. Check that out. I'm putting it up on SR Show SXM on Twitter as we speak. Uh, let's go to Ira in Vermont. Ira, you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's up? How you doing? Doing. Hey, I wanted your opinion on uh, the TMZ article on how they posted the 911 call from Dusty Rhodes' wife. A lot of people are talking about that. I think I'm going to get to that. I think I'm going to take a quick break first. But uh, a lot of people are talking about this. So TMZ, of course, you know, we were talking about this last week that Dusty Rhodes died. Um, and if you're a big wrestling fan, I talked about it with uh, Corey Graves on my wrestling podcast this week, which is online at notsam.com. But TMZ posted the 911 call that Dusty's wife, Dusty's wife called. So Dusty Rhodes, he's 69 years old. He died after he fell. And I guess he was sick, and uh, nobody really knew it. It wasn't a public thing, but he wasn't doing well. And he fell, and he died of complications. So his wife calls 911 in a panic, and TMZ posts the call. I'm not going to play the call, but I will talk about how sh- what a shitty thing it is for TMZ to do. All of that. There's new Trump stuff that I want to play for you. Uh, speaking of... Netflix, I want to talk about this new character that everybody's talking about on Orange is the New Black. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, Taylor Strecker is coming in here in just a couple minutes. Uh, Stay tuned. Sam Roberts Show continues right after this. Welcome back to the Sam Roberts Show. It's crazy town. Because that's what it is in here. It's crazy town. I got a lot of uh, requests for crazy town after yesterday's conversation about Smash Mouth quite possibly being the worst band that's ever existed. A lot of tweets coming in about Crazy Town taking that title. I don't think so, because Crazy Town, this is the only Crazy Town song I know. I can name like three terrible Smash Mouth songs, so uh, I don't see, I don't think it's fair to call Crazy Town the worst band of all time, but if you missed any of that conversation yesterday, it is, of course, since it's 2015, available on demand at SiriusXM.com slash on demand uh, in studio with me. Taylor Strecker is here. What's going on, Taylor? Hey, what's going on, baby? Taylor from Wake Up with Taylor on Stars. Are you, are you the only cele- non celebrity left on that channel? Well, do you think Jenny Hutt's a celebrity? No, then no, no, fuck no. Yeah, then no, then I forgot no. she was on there too. Okay, yeah, so she's it's, on you, there. it's you and she's Jenny a, Hunt. She's a celebrity to me. Is she? I love Jenny. With, I mean, yeah, but I mean, you could love a lot of people. It doesn't make them celebrities. Okay, fine, we're not celebrities. Right. But I mean, we we are like pseudo celebs. Who's we? Me. Are you? Are you fucking kidding me? You got first of all, if you're such a celebrity, you would know to talk into the side of the mic. It's a special mic. What? What are you talking about? That's I right. That I don't know. Oh, oh how much better do we sound? 
Mm-hmm. That's this studio. This is a beautiful Lincoln Center uh, studio that we're a part of here in the Sam Roberts Show party room. I'm chewing, chewing gum. gum. Yeah, you're not even sort of a celebrity. You're not even a professional broadcaster. <laughs> um, Listen to this. Nothing. Nothing in my mouth. All right, I'll take it out. Good. I want to have nice, fresh breaths for you. Thank God. Nice, uh-huh. fresh breasts for breaths, me. Breaths. Breaths. Oh. Breasts, but my my breasts are pretty fresh to death. I have to say, I I was noticing them as you walked in. Oh, thanks! I'm I not wearing a bra. Well, if you want proof of that, there'll be photos posted at SR Show <laughs> SXM on yeah. Twitter. Uh, Paul will be taking I'd candids like... while uh, Taylor's not looking. Well, wait, I would like to. You take pictures of my breasts, but can I put <laughs> mascara on before you take a picture of my? Don't face? worry, your face won't be in them. Oh, great! Yeah, yeah go nobody's ahead. interested. Just take a picture of my amazing nipples and my great rack. Yes, I was just thinking that. So Taylor. Uh huh. A lot going on. Yeah, right? We were just talking about... Tell me what you think of this. Okay. So, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes, dies. You, mm-hmm. you heard about that, I'm sure. Who? What? <laughs> I'm not joking. Hard times? You have no idea. I know nothing about nothing. Is that hard times thing still in this system, or is it... Is it deleted? Because how could you not know who does? First of all, it was a national news story. You're, that I mean, I heard of it, but like I pretended like like we do the seven things you need to know before you go. Oh, and Kenny is that like CNN's five things you need to know to start your day? Um, yeah, they copied us. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so Kenny <laughs> delivers the news, and like I legitimately don't know anything that's going on. He filters the news through to me, so he did that story. But I was like, huh. But I just pretend like I know. You, did. you know, I have to keep my jobs and shit. You, yeah, but you could just ask a question and have a discussion about it. Or does not that not how the five things or seven things works? Um, right now, you know, we're trying to be as tight as can be. So gotcha. I, if if I'm if I'm inquisitive, I try to sound like I know at least something about it. You know, it's it's not cute to broadcast and know nothing about the news. Right. I mean, you could spend some time at home going beyond the headlines, but maybe that's not you. I don't want to judge. Internet. Question mark? <laughs> That's right. Listen to Dusty Rhodes. I would like to thank the many, many fans throughout this country that wrote cards and letters to Dusty Rhodes, the American dream, while I was down. Mm. That's right, Daddy. Secondly, I want to thank Jim Crockett Promotions. David Crockett? Jim Crockett. <laughs> I know how Daddy. I know who David is. Stone Kate 85 it is to the resident fans, it is to Jim Crockett Promotions. Huh. And Dusty Rhodes, the American dream. Don't know any of these people. <laughs> what? With that weight... Got what I wanted. Ric Flair, the world's heavyweight nope. champion. Oh, here we go. Gotcha. I don't have to say a lot more. Is this wrestling? About the way I we were at a concert. <laughs> no respect. No honor. But there is no honor amongst thieves in the first place. Is he reverend? <laughs> no, he's Dusty Rhodes. He's the American dream. And Taylor, you're putting hard times on this country. But not giving the American dream his respect. Is this what is is this wrestling? Yeah, of course it was it's from 1985. <laughs> okay, he's a legend. He's very, very important. Yeah, I definitely but don't care to know. I don't. Taylor, <laughs> you should have respect for the American Dream, dust the roads, Daddy. Well, I do love America, so exactly. And he's the American Dream, son of a plumber. He's dined with kings and queens and in alleys, eating on pork and beans. Oh wow, he's a he's a a poet of That's sorts. Right. That's I got right. you. He is. He's a wordsmith to say the least, but. TMZ, news outlet that they are, mm-hmm. decides, so Dusty Rhodes died last week. He was 69. How'd he die? He, nice age to die. <laughs> 69. That's very 69's clever. 69's actually awesome. To 69 someone, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I've done it before. It is. It's a lot of fun. I used to think it was the dumbest thing ever, but I've, I have I mean, I are think... You, did you just find out what that's like? No, I, but I think it's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> have you not 69 before? No, I haven't. I hated it. But now you're ready to try it again. Yes. Wow. <laughs> this is just... <laughs> you, you have sort of a high school mentality right now. <laughs> oh, I am reverting back to my adolescent years for sure. Right. Which terrifies my poor mother. Yeah, I would imagine. Well, have you explained to your listeners why you're... Can I explain uh, why you're... We haven't, like, it, it, you know, hopefully within the next week I'll be able to actually, like, legally talk about it. But, I mean, read between the lines. Uh, yeah, there's a, sometimes... Life shift. Right. There's a person that would stop you from 69 with other people that's maybe not stopping you anymore. Precisely. Right. Yeah. And you're what that's one of the things that you're like... My dad. Your father <laughs> you is who it. we're talking about. But yeah. as, as you He's make this life transition... So strict. What? <laughs> as you make this life transition... Yes. And you start to say, okay, you know... It's been a couple months in the works. Very negative at first, of course. Of course. 
But when you look at the positive side of things, right now, uh-huh. one of the things you're looking at is, oh, I'll get to 69 with more people. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It is. Yeah, That's sure. very, very exciting to me. I'm, I'm, I'm excited Although, by that. With 69, the butt is such an issue. I mean, it's so close to the areas. Well, that is God's practical joke, isn't it? <laughs> that he placed the genitals so near the anus. The playground next to the sewage system. Right. Yes. So you're not, uh, part of your new exploration in yourself, and Dusty Rhodes can wait, by the way, <laughs> is not to, uh, Lick butthole necessarily. <laughs> yeah, right? I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to do That's that. That's not for you. That's fine. Yeah, but like, how do people even lick butthole? Like with their tongue. But how do they get it? Like, how does someone get their butthole that clean and perfect and pretty with, with somebody else's tongue? That's <laughs> what they're doing it for. But like, I mean, wet wipes, Taylor. That's the secret. I know. Hello. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. I, I know the secrets. Look, I'm not. I'm not a. Uh, an analingus con- connoisseur. I just hear that this is what people do. I don't. And that's not for <laughs> Have me. Have you either. ever done it? No. No. It's not for me. It's <laughs> not. It's not something. And I would not subject somebody to do that to me. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think. I don't think I would have fun doing it to me, so I wouldn't make somebody. I wouldn't ask that of somebody. Wait. Would you rather, if you had to? Yes. Get it or mm-hmm. give it? Well, get it def- <laughs> definitely, right? I mean. I don't know. I think get it. There's less chance of shit being on my mouth <laughs> if I'm getting it. I'm kind of insecure about my butt, so I huh. think I might be teetering on the line. But 69 is something you're looking forward to. <laughs> no, it's not. Well, I mean, if you're on the bottom laying down. Yes. Yes. That's the only way. You don't have you to can... worry about y- your <laughs> ass as much. You know what you could do? What? Take a shower. Oh, Clean yourself. Well, you could, what? Uh, that's right. God, I shower so much now. It's so stupid. You shower more now? Way more. <laughs> I have to be attracted to people. <laughs> so, so you think to yourself, oh man, I have to smell good before I leave the house. My butt needs to smell good before I enter into a social situation. Right now, it's not just dry toilet paper. Now it is wet wipes. <laughs> it's a whole life change. I do wonder if... Uh, your father, I guess, is what we're calling him. <laughs> will will think to himself, "Oh man, like, you know, I uh, now Taylor is the best Taylor. I don't understand how this happened. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have stopped being her father." Is what we'll say. <laughs> oh, my poor dad. <laughs> Are you looking forward to kind of living life without a, a, a dad? Yes. 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 That's something you're looking forward to now. Yeah. Not at first. It was. I'm a free spirit. I since am. Since when? I know. Since I've realized forever. My therapist and I talk about this kind of stuff. About how you're a free spirit? He was just like, you're not normal. And that's a good thing. And he's like, but like, stop trying to follow the lemmings and like live the life that society says to live. Just like be free and crazy. That's what you're going to do. Yes. It, uh, you know who I think influenced you? Who, Nicole? No, X-Pac. You remember this moment? No, I don't think he did. Welcome back oh, to Storytime. You were there for this. professional wrestler, Sadly. X-Pac. Suck it. I was mixing coke and meth. What the <laughs> fuck? Holy shit, man. A few times I thought my, I was going to die. Like, I mm-hmm. thought my heart was going to explode. I fucking I started to fall over. And as soon as I recovered, I fucking mixed me another one up and did it again. <laughs> Stay tuned for more fun stories from professional wrestler X-Pac here on Sam Roberts Show. So coke and meth, is that something a free spirit does? No, that's something that a, a crackhead does. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. at one point, maybe that was X-Pac. Not anymore. Now he's a healthy, developed person. I'm trying to tweet at you, by the way. That's why I'm looking at my phone. I'm not trying to be so rude. That's okay. And you can also tweet at SR Show SXM on Twitter. Maybe you can find somebody. You can, people could go to the Twitter account, see a photo of you, and say, oh, don't worry, Taylor. I know that you're going through a separation with your dad. <laughs> But I would, I would sixty nine you. Maybe somebody will say that, and that's something that you'd find flattering. No, um, yeah, no. You wouldn't. No, I hate that. I hate when. Okay, so I used to work with this girl. I'll just say her name. Do, say it. Oh, well, I, I just, just her first I, name. Yeah, I get scared. I'm going to get sued. Right. How about we'll call her Dee Dee. Dee Dee. Dee Dee. If you listen to my show and you've listened to Cosmo Radio for years, you probably can figure out who Dee Dee is. Okay. So she was this girl. She came over from Maxim Radio. Okay. 
Um, and she... People love... Man, this company just loves turning a magazine into a radio station. Loves it! <laughs> they got one idea about 10 years uh-huh. ago, and they're like, let's do that. They just go to Martha, CVS. Cosmo. Maxim. <laughs> yeah, Entertainment Weekly. Right! They just go to CVS, and they go, hmm, let me go to the periodicals and figure out what is my next programming idea. I hope they put me on Ebony. <laughs> <laughs> With this butt? That's my... That's my future. I think you could do it. Uh huh. I would listen. Um. So basically, she worked for Maxim and Cosmo, and she was like perfect for Mas- Maxim. Not so I forgot. Mm, didn't work because it's more like I know Cosmo's like sex, but it's like female empowerment. It's, it's for like ladies. Cloaked. Right. Maxim yeah, is feminism. for Maxim is for men. Cosmo is for women. And so we were sitting next to each other up at the office, and she was like, "Oh my god, these <laughs> listeners are so sweet." <laughs> and I mean, you know, she had like the lip liner, the fake. Tits, the whole thing. That's great. Yeah, and she was like very I, guy friendly. How long ago was this? Oh my god, it must have been like five five years ago. I wish that merger had happened sooner. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Mm-hmm. So she uh, I, she was like, look at these nice comments on my Facebook page, and these guys were like, I want a titty, fuck you, and I was like, what? <laughs> that's that's great. Not, no, that's not that's not the kind of attention. If I was sitting there, if I was hosting this radio show, and I just had mm-hmm. a bunch of chicks, and all my feedback on my show was like, I'm putting out, I'm doing this show, and like I got all this material, and I'm coming up with bits and then i got a facebook full of like damn sam i want to suck your dick it's different and for it's girls. a bunch of girls i think it's different for girls i'd be like i'm doing a great job i'm gonna keep doing this show forever here's the logic i've never though. had such great feedback in my life i feel like a person here's the logic yes men want to bang anything so it's not like a compliment to guys like i want to have sex with you like 4 a.m a guy will have sex with a couch so i only not... if he hasn't had sex yet for the, in the of evening of course i dated this guy who was hot yeah. And he packing. We, we were just packing. I hate big dicks, though. I hate them. <laughs> Hurts. You love. I have me. a little tiny vagina. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's for so now, innocent. but we'll see what happens. No, I'm not doing that. So <laughs> we'll see where this I'm whole no sale, dad thing not leads. For rent. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So, um, so he and I were just friends for a while, and there was this girl in like one of my production classes at school, and she was all like, "Oh, you're friends with blah blah." blah. And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." And she was like, "He comes knocking on my door for my roommate at like three thirty in the morning, like at least once a week." And I was like, "Oh, where's roommate?" She pointed her beast, beast. Really? And I was like, with- "Oh my god!" But that's that. That's that very late night. I understand yeah. that. Like but- that's. that's Sort it's of so like shameful. So that's that right there. That's my example. Why would I ever feel honored that someone wants what to if, put their penis in my ass crack? What if somebody was like, Taylor, I think you're great on the radio. I'd love to have sex with you at 10 o'clock at night. What? Then it's like, no, that's what not if they were like, you're the best. I would marry you. Well, yeah. I mean, who wants to? No, that's a. T- why would anybody say that? That's. A- I want to get married. What? No, I don't. No, right no, now. no, Taylor. You want the guy who's like coming no. to you and saying, Taylor, I would have sex with you before dinner. That's how attractive I find you. No, you don't get to have sex with me until we've eaten. And I don't get to have sex with him. I might have to poop. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's, that's terrible. That's, that's not good at all. But I'm saying, like, the difference between 3.30 a.m. and, like, 6 p.m. is nine hours. Yeah, no. It's very, very flattering. No, no. I, I don't, I don't like the one, like, first date we have sex. I, I if I could, that. if I could, if I could give you advice, whether you're planning on having sex or not, <laughs> make sure you move your bowels before you leave the house. No matter what, if it's the first date, the third date, whatever it is. Yeah, but sometimes it's not that easy. I understand, but just try to, <laughs> try to be regular about it. Try to, like, let, I wh- can't. Did these hours? Radio hours? I can't. I guess. It really screws up the <laughs> the system. Yeah, no, I understand. I trust me. I live it. My actually, my therapist. I'm going to say this. By the way, you, you talk should... about your bowel movements with your therapist. No, well, I went to my therapist because I was having some butt problems. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what the therapist takes care no, of. No, I know. Okay, do, okay, full disclosure. So I was in a very stressful situation for about five and a half years. Okay, was that with your dad? Yeah, my dad. Okay. <laughs> and um, I it like it was like it manifested itself in like weird physical ailments. So the final straw was when I got the hemorrhoids. Oh my god. <laughs> So you got no. that's that's when you know you and your dad are not meant to be <laughs> when your dad's giving you dad, hemorrhoids. I have to be emancipated from you. <laughs> yeah. yes. So basically, I know, right? Funny and smart. Yeah, it's really Crazy. great. Really great. So basically, I uh, I went to this. So I went to urgent. I, I couldn't sleep. My butt hurt so bad. It woke me up in the middle of the night. Even if you butt. were like laying on your stomach. Yes, I would have to sleep in the bathtub. You slept in the bathtub. Sometimes I slept in the bathtub when things were very stressful. Yes. Now is that because? Of emotions. your emotions well, or I hemorrhoids? Thought it was physical. I thought it was physical. Mm-hmm. So I go to the doctor. They can't figure out what to fix. So it your got butt. 
my butt. So I got so bad. Yeah. Colonoscopy, the whole thing. Horrific, by the way, colonoscopy. Especially, the worst. especially to get a colonoscopy while you have hemorrhoids. That's got to yeah. be terrible. Well, they put you out. It's the best drug in the world. It's like propofol, and you're like... You know how I know that's good? Why? It killed Michael Jackson to death. <laughs> Michael Jackson died from it. Yeah, I know. I was like, I'm going to see Michael soon. <laughs> he, he, ow! So basically, you're all energy today. I know. <laughs> I'm like delirious. Too. I love it. I love it. It's like it. 11 p.m. for me. Good. So basically... You know what uh, that means? What? Only a couple uh, more hours, and I'll be knocking on your door. Oh, great. <laughs> So go. Uh, I, I can't sleep, so I go to urgent care. That's how desperate I was. For and your I, hemorrhoids. I go and I'm like, can you please give me like a Xanax or like an, an, an Ativan or like an, an yeah. Ambien or something to sleep? And the guy was like, he was Indian. He was like, uh, are you a drug addict? And I was like, no, I'm a radio show host. I can't do drugs, but I need them to sleep. So he was like, I think our issue, after probing me, right. I think our issue is psychological. And I was like, what? Is this just a pharmacist? No, this is urgent care. It's a doctor. Okay. It's, it's an ER but like less annoying okay so basically i started crying i called nicole morning mash from nicole and how, what time of the day was this i don't know like it was after the show i hadn't slept in four days oh, okay four okay nights. all right because of hemorrhoids and stress well hemorrhoids is what Hemorrho- i st- hem stress related hemorrhoids right yes. they're gone now by the way i just want everybody to know that I'm that my butthole f- is perfect i'm glad you're feeling better <laughs> just slide it's like a slip and slide in there everything is so smooth <laughs> Gorgeous. I bleached it too, just to like keep up with the kids. Well, you're, you're you know, you're, you're in a life transition, so you got to. So, um, I got a psychiatrist because I had to get medication. I only went him just for the drugs. Let's get real. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. But just to sleep, not to be like a crackhead, not to be like. But you know. people don't generally treat hemorrhoids with Xanax. I know. I just wanted to sleep at night. I didn't think anything of it. So I go. <laughs> and he takes an hour and a half session with me that's his like standard thing get the like, therapist getting to know you right and through the whole thing like he was like he hit so many points he was like so you and sex weird huh and i was like totally weird how did you know that yeah whatever and then he was like so because well, yeah, the last time we talked taylor you yeah. were on the show and really all we touched on was the fact that you had catholic guilt right but but this is a whole new... I know, I'm like a different person. So go on. So basically, he was like, so you're here because... I was like, I can't sleep at night, I need to sleep. These hemorrhoids. He was like, well, you know what we call the butthole in therapy or in psychiatry, right? And I was like, no. He's the finger like, puppet. The second brain. Oh. So when you push shit out of your head emotionally, whatever, it physically manifests itself in your digestive system. No fucking way. Yes, it does. So like, I went through all the years of my relationship with my dad. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I had heartburn. Then right. I had had like diarrhea, then it turned into a hammer. I'm, I'm telling you, it was like a nonstop digestive attack. It almost makes you wonder why you ever started your relationship with your dad five years ago. <laughs> In the first place, right. I am five and a half now. Five and a half, yes, right, right, yes. right. Quite the mature voice. So then what did you... So basically he was like, so I'll put you on medicine to sleep at night, but like this can't be a fix forever. What kind of medicine? Um, Klonopin. Okay. Yeah, to sleep at night. But I mean like a half of a dose and I'm out. I okay. don't do drugs. Obviously Anymore. not. Obviously not. Anymore. Because because only a sober person would think to themselves, I have hemorrhoids, I should go get Xanax. <laughs> it's the only thing that could help me sleep. Of course. And people are asking, well, how did you know that that would put you to sleep if you've never? Right. And that's a question that will go unanswered. I, I, I just thought that that would make sense. It's called WebMD, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and that's what WebMD says. So you take the stuff to help you go to sleep. So how do you get rid of the hemorrhoids? Well, so he was like, it's all emotional. So we just got to work on you and happiness and the stress and it will go away. And they did. Is that true? Yes. Because I have a real hard time believing that. Because I'm like, okay, my stress is in my head. These hemorrhoids are real. Yeah. They're well, there. Hello? Why did I cry when the stupid urgent care Indian doctor told me that I need to go see a psychiatrist? I was f- really upset. Yeah, I mean, that's because you were also fucking nuts. <laughs> you thought Xanax would treat hemorrhoids. It did! <laughs> okay, I mean, I guess. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, Taylor. And it's clonopin. Stop being so stupid. No, you're right. Let me go to Chris, the teacher. If you want to call up 866 866- Nine six nine one nine six nine eight six six nine six nine one nine six nine. I'm here with Taylor Strecker. You can follow her on Twitter at Taylor Strecker, and she's at a, a an amazingly interesting point in her life right now. <laughs> What's going on, Chris, the teacher? What's up, man? I have never minded being on hold less in my whole life than when we talk about this. And I checked on Twitter while I was on hold. This beautiful girl's little type on hold. She is gorgeous. 
I can see that. You're really uh, beautiful, but you are a <laughs> mental mess. <laughs> I know. You gave yourself hemorrhoids. I know. And no, you, other you, people did. Your dad. You, no, you, my dad's relatives. Oh, <laughs> your dad's family. <laughs> Go on, Chris. Uh, is this is that why you don't like getting your butthole licked? Because the whole hemorrhoid thing? Yeah, it's probably that I'm insecure about it. I mean, it look. I'm sure it looks. Did great. you ever have your dad lick your butthole? Never. Okay. Never. <laughs> Did not think I was going to wake up and hear someone ask someone if they had their dad lick their butthole. <laughs> uh, Read between the lines, ladies and gentlemen. Now you talked about somebody fucking a couch at four a.m. What if they were fucking a bagel? How would you feel about that? Yeah, inanimate objects are just a no in well, my what book. If, what if they the were bagels a, are so delicious? And what if they were a teenager? I would want to shove them in my vagina. Actually, they're that good. You would think Only about Flagels it. Only Flagels from Metro, right by Sirius. I understand. What they're if so good. what if they were a teenager? What? And they were just kind of figuring some shit out, and they realized there's a hole in the bagel. Did and you they, fuck a bagel? Yes, I did. <laughs> Kenny fucked a couch. So okay, so you understand the men in your life? Actually, a husband pillow. You know, with the arms. Oh yeah, kind of looks like a vagina. I guess, but it's called a husband pillow. <laughs> there was he stabbed it one day, teenage angst. Right. And he saw the cotton coming through. The cotton. And the cotton, and he thought, "What if I put my peeps in that little hole?" So he, he made the hole bigger. Did he use the word peeps? Yeah, like I guess clearly, I just did. Yeah. Yeah. But he used that word. Yeah, put his peeps in there, and uh, and like the arms of the pillow were like the legs of a lady, and he had fucking sex with a husband pillow. And there's a song that we have on the show about it. Really? It's called Husband Pillow. Did he fall in love at all? Or yes, <laughs> he it, did. It's like it's like a romantic song. You're telling me, Chris, the teacher, you never fucked an inanimate object? Nah, man, we've been through this. Me and you, come on, dude. First of all, it's only what is it? June? It's June seventeenth. What yeah. the fuck? is going on with those kids you're supposed to be teaching right now? Uh, it's ex the exam for the next two weeks. So I'm supposed to be grading state tests, but I'm talking to you and listening to this chick butthole. All right, well, I mean, I get <laughs> it. Chick butthole. I get I wanna, it. I'd like to, if, if I may, yeah. just, just get this, get a little bit more information about this girl because she's dropped very, some subtle hints, and maybe I think that I can help her out. Oh. I think that she's struggling with some things. You, you sound like you're kind of a little bit of a mess mentally. Mm -hmm. um, she's getting out of it, though, Chris. I'm out. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, I'll be honest with you, hon. It doesn't sound like it. It sounds like you're trying to make yourself believe that you're getting out of it. Well, as fair much, enough. And you, you're going to kind of fake it until you make it. And I'm saying this respectfully. Yeah, but her butthole's smooth now. She does not have hemorrhoids. They're <laughs> keeping her awake at night. But the problem is she says specifically that sex for her is strange. Um, is there, can, can I just ask a couple questions on oh that? Or you, don't have... I, you can ask them. I don't know if I'm going to okay. answer That's them. Fair. That's fair. Uh, have you ever broken out into laughter or giggling during sex? No. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what about tears? You yes. cried. You cried after sex? That's fucking <laughs> no, crazy no, chick yes, behavior yes, number one. Yes, yes, yes. During. Okay. No, I'm um, after, after. And, yeah, and then he was all, because it was nice. And I'm like, no. <laughs> How often? How, how many times does that, that happen? Very rare. Very. But rare. a few times. Maybe like uh, three. Maybe probably one. I can think of. Right. And was this with your I most don't. recent partner? That I will not answer. Okay. <laughs> Sam, I'm gonna, Sam, I'm gonna have to ask you to take the second chair right now because I'm we're getting somewhere. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Chris, the teacher. Apparently, I'm getting schooled. <laughs> Go on. Uh, all right. So it's been so a few times you cry. Was the it had? You said you have a little little type of vagina. It had nothing to do with the size of the cock. It was more of an reason for emotional tears right oh, okay Chris, oh, that, it wasn't physical oh, i wasn't in pain physically yeah, it was exactly, an emotional exactly. that, that question could have been worded a little yeah, more delicately that was really really rude yeah i mean come on chris I got, and i'm I crying hold, now i gotta hold my tongue while i'm front of the kids i gotta let it out somewhere you're right okay, um now last question chris i'm sick of this dude we're getting somewhere with this chick we're gonna help her is it called chris the teacher show with a possessive s no it's <laughs> sam roberts show with an apostrophe for possessive me it's my show last question <laughs> Yeah, but that, even that's debatable because Robert is your last name. There's nothing to debate. I will teach the teacher uh, right now. You have one more question, and then you're fucking in-house suspended. Uh, damn it. Oh, it's us. Um, what, when you cried, was it because you had built this experience up to be something, and then you were crestfallen with the results? No. Or it, it was because... Uh, I thought he, that was want, his last question. He can ask a follow-up. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> you're the best. Hey, uh was it because you would you so it wasn't that was it because you wanted it to be better physically? Yes. All right, that's it. Goodbye, Chris. That's it. 
Because you wanted it to be better. You built well, it up in your head. not physically. Not like it was bad. It was just like it, it was a, a lack of emotional connection. I get it. Yeah. Like you were intimate with this person, whomever it could have been. Yeah, let's please. You were intimate with this person physically, thinking that it would bring you guys together emotionally. This is something women do. Yeah. And it didn't for him. He was just like, oh, that was great. I got a nut off. And right. you were like, I don't feel any closer to you, though. I don't understand what happened. Yeah. And he was like, are you crying? Because like, I just laid pipes so well. And you're like, no, no, I don't know. We're not connected like we should be. Yep. Okay. I get it. Okay. I get it. Okay. So have you, do you feel less crazy now? Uh, yeah. Yes and no. I'm like a different kind of crazy. Do you feel? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like college crazy now. Like, I play beer pong a lot. You do? Oh, my God. I'm amazing at Flip Cup. Who do you play beer pong with? My friends that I met that are in college. <laughs> no. No. Uh, one year out of college. I'm not joking. I'm 32. Taylor, you can't be. <laughs> I am 22 year old. What are you doing? I'm having fun. No, I understand it's fun. You know who's a good time? Me. I don't hang out with no, fucking. No, you don't drink. You know I have a thing with this. What's the thing? You... I got a thing right here. <laughs> you don't drink. Yeah? So you can let the... Ergo, you Air- can judge me. Yeah, but guess what you're doing right now? Judging you. Oh, how did that Sad happen? Tear. I didn't even need to prescribe you pills to figure that one out, <laughs> did I? Because I'm a fucking genius. And people forget that all the time. Oh, uh, you are genius. I'm a blast is the thing that people don't understand. I have to pee. Let me go. To- <laughs> I don't want to give you hemorrhoids and stress. <laughs> Lady Trucker. Sam, I'm standing by for your honor to be your booty call. So you don't mind? It's four o'clock because I mean, Lady Trucker. You know, uh, you know how fine how fond I am of you. I think you're the greatest. I love when you call, but you have to understand, you would be the sort of four, even pushing five a.m. <laughs> knock on the door. You understand that? Yeah, yeah, I'd understand. <laughs> I mean, you you have to have a lot of sleep in your eye. <laughs> you know. yeah, that's true. Well, I, I mean, the fact that you're in touch with reality, Lady Trucker, is very, very attractive to me. So I may, I may at some point take you up on that offer. Well, I'm just standing by. All right, I'll talk to you later. If you ever seen a photo of uh, of Lady Trucker, uh, Taylor Strucker, you would know exactly what I was talking about. I'm going to let you urinate. I feel like oh, you've thanks. given us a lot right now. Thank you. So much. I didn't get to anything that I wanted to talk about because I find you endlessly interesting. Thank you. And I'm going to continue to prod at you. Yes. As well as get into some of the stuff I wanted to get into. I want to talk to you about Donald Trump maybe a little bit. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I would vote for him. Okay, we'll talk about that. Do you watch Money. Orange is the New Black? Duh! Did you watch the new season? Yeah, well, I'm only like one or two episodes in. Okay, well, I want to talk to you about a new character that oh, everybody's Oh, I know, going. Ruby Rose. Oh, my God, I'm going to become I'm, a lesbian. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> We've got a lot to talk about when we come back with Sam Roberts' show. <laughs> Taylor can relate to that. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Sam Roberts Show. Taylor Strecker's here with us today, and you can be too. Call up 866-969-1969, 866-969-1969. You can be a part of this extravaganza, or tweet along at SR Show SXM, at SR Show SXM. Follow us on Twitter. You can find the links to everything we're talking about, pictures of Taylor. In very compromising positions. Uh, and everything else you could possibly want. What I was going to say, before you so rudely interrupted me but, earlier, yeah, was that TMZ is a bunch of fucking scumbags for posting the 911 call. Dusty Rhodes' wife calls 911 to okay. say, my husband fell down and she thinks he's dying. And she needs an ambulance. Oh, my God. And TMZ, and there's nothing newsworthy. There's no new information. There's nothing going on in the phone call that makes anything clearer, except that the 911 operator was kind of a dick. Uh-huh. Um, and TMZ just posted it, like, oh, here's the Dusty Roads 911 call. And it's like, what? Why? On what level is this at all newsworthy? How is this not just strictly exploitive? That's why I'm not playing it on the show. Right. You know? It's gross. It is. Well, teams is disgusting. They're shameless. It's Yeah. I mean, it's pure shit. Like, that's one of those things that you just look at, and it's just pure awfulness. It's not even human. No. It's, 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 I, I don't, I don't get how a company as big as TMZ could have as many people as you have to go through before anything pops up on that website. Cause it's one guy, maybe Harvey, but besides Harvey, <laughs> nobody else has access to just post something on TMZ. Right. Like, it's not it's not some guy's blog. It's one of the biggest websites there is. 
So the amount of people that have to clear something before it makes the website... It's a lot. And nobody said... It's tasteless. Yeah, let's not do that, because it's just fucked. Right. That's just about a guy dying the, and, and his wife. I know, but now we live in this world where we want access to everything when it comes to celebrity. So we feel like... Pff, we deserve it. So is it TMZ that's disgusting or are we disgusting? Well, I would say it's TMZ because there have been a bunch of people that have come out and said, this is fucked. Like, this shouldn't be here. Like, I listened to it just to be informed. Right. But no part of me felt better about listening to it and no part of me wanted to hear it before. How'd they even get it? I think 911 calls are all public record. Oh, really? Yeah. So I think huh. I think you can if you know how to ask for them and all that, and then you make them public. Right. Uh, Bruce, you're on Sam Roberts' show here with Taylor Strecker from Wake Up With Taylor on Stars. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little bit shitty, Sam, but they play, I mean, you, you guys have played, like, you know, Donald Sterling, Mel Gibson, the, she enticed me. That well, woman was dying on the floor. It's one thing, because here's the difference, I think, anyway, and maybe I'm just all fucked up in my head and justifying things, but I think the Donald Sterling and Mel Gibson things, those are newsworthy, because they're public figures, and it's like, would I, would I, if I found that tape, would I release it? Well, I probably would release it. I have a radio show I have to think about. You know, I have to to get, I have to get some ears. But they are, but, but he was in his own house, but they are at least, even though he was being recorded, but it's newsworthy. His wife has to understand she's being recorded. And, and, and the he enticed, she enticed me, guy. But did she, okay, I'll explain it to you. <laughs> I'll explain it to you, Bruce. Here's the difference. The, the, the secretly recorded tapes, morally, is it a good thing to secretly record somebody? No. But is it newsworthy that the owner of the L.A. Clippers is making racial comments and that Mel Gibson is making anti-Semitic comments? Yeah, that's newsworthy. So it becomes a thing where you can absolutely argue that those are newsworthy. The she what, enticed what, me uh, guy... The she enticed me guy. That call is fucking funny. So, it is, but was it newsworthy when Rodney King's wife's uh, nine one one call got played and he died in the pool? That got played. That's not newsworthy, and everybody played it. I'm not saying it's. I, I love Dream, and I don't think it should have got released. But everything gets released, and to then pick and choose and say, but this one's different, is kind of like saying. I love cancer jokes. I well, no, because it jokes. sounds like... Oh, but my daughter's retarded. Don't make a retard it, joke. It sounds like I would agree with you that the Rodney King wife... I don't remember Rodney King's wife's 911 call, but I probably, if it didn't add anything to the story, if there's no new information in that call, then I would say, no, don't play it. If it, all it does is... is uh, is satisfy morbid curiosity right. and upset people, then don't play it. If, it. if it adds anything, if there's something funny or if there's something newsworthy or if there's anything that's worthwhile, then go ahead and play it. I don't give a shit. But if there, if, if, right, it, if it's... I got one more silver dollar, Daddy, and I'm out. <laughs> All right, buddy. I'll talk to you later. See, <laughs> Dusty is a legend, Daddy. <laughs> Baby, Dusty is a legend. And you don't play the legend's voicemails. Baby, you don't play the 911 calls of Mac and Dream. <laughs> Champion of the world, baby. Let's go to Ben in Florida. What's going on, Ben? <laughs> hey, Sammy. Yeah, that's right. I just got to say, the only people who watch TMZ are the sheep who choose to sleep. But one other thing, uh, that Orange is the New Black character, Ruby Rose, I think she might be one of the hottest women I've ever seen. Well, I want to talk about that in a second. John in New York? Hey, what's up, bro? How you doing, bro? <laughs> your ho- your co-host there. I hope she's going to get in that wrestling match out in uh, the desert. But anyway. What? Um, do you mm-hmm. think- Is that a threat of murder? You don't remember, you don't remember that little statement yesterday? Hmm. You're going to have that all that, that match out there where they're all going to duke it out and you're going to take the winner of it? That's right. Oh. You're right. I totally forgot. John, thank you for keeping me on my game. Taylor, I want yeah. you to know why you're here. Why? Now listen. Because I'm bringing my regulars in. Okay. All my women that uh-huh. I have on the show. The Taylor Streckers of the world. Your the Nicole Ryans. Yes. The Katie Linendahls. Yes. Uh, the Jackie Moran. Love! Everybody. I love Nicole, too, but I'm, she's my best friend, so I don't have to scream for her. Everybody. Yeah. Is going to end up in a desert with spiked cars, and you're all going to fight for the right to be here every day. Really? That's where this is going. I'm going to win. And you're not going to wear a lot of clothes when you do it. Ugh. And I'm going to wear... That's my one disadvantage. No, you won't be wearing a lot of clothes, and I'm going to wear a loincloth and a face paint on. I really hope we do this, and I have a great videographer to help us. <laughs> okay, great. Come on, John. Now listen, do you think TMZ 
would ever kill somebody to make the news. Absolutely. I think TMZ is basically Jake Gyllenhaal in uh, Nightcrawler. Just fucking cutting breaks. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're yeah, making yeah. news to report it. Absolutely. He's just <laughs> orchestrating murders. Just, I, I don't have a doubt in my mind that there are people. Would everybody at TMZ do that? No. Mm-mm. I know people no. at TMZ. They're not all soulless people. But the people who are in charge of TMZ would absolutely, I believe, in the humble opinion of this deeply respected professional broadcaster, yes, I think that would happen. Are they I, money I think so. whores or are they glory whores? Um, but they like both. They love the fame, they love the attention, but they also love the money it brings. Mm-hmm. All right, now this Ruby Red chick, I've watched two episodes. Is she on yet, or am I waiting to see her? No, I haven't seen her yet. So everybody's talking about this new character on Orange is the New Black. Natasha Leone was on the show a couple days ago. Yeah, she's a freak. And yeah, she is. Mm-hmm. She was talking about fisting with ninja stars. Oh, we didn't quite get that. She, <laughs> yeah. was, she was just talking like an old Jewish man. Right. <laughs> yeah, we ended up talking about fisting with ninja stars because she likes the vagina to be in a star shape. Oh, so she cuts it my with a ninja star. Stop. That's not her character. That's her real life. Yeah, I got that. Um, But... I hadn't seen all the episodes before I talked to Natasha. Uh-huh. I saw the first episode. It was like, bring your kid to work day or whatever. Right. But I'm a big fan of Orange is the Mother's New Black. Day. Mother's Same Day. Same thing. Yeah. Bring your kid to work day. What if? <laughs> but I'm a big uh, Orange is the New Black fan. Yes. Everybody is talking about this sort of, uh, I don't know if you'd call her, I think she's she's being referred to as... Uh, a gender? Yeah, she doesn't want to. She, she's like Miley. She doesn't want to be genderized. She looks like Justin fucking Bieber. She does, and that makes me think Justin Bieber is the hottest lesbian I've ever seen in my entire life. That's right. We'll post a photo of her on. She's pretty. Well, I haven't seen her on the show yet either. Right. But we today, my uh, we we have like a faux producer right now. Okay. Well, she's awesome, and she said that all her friends were like this. Would girl's she like? Turn is she hot? Gay. Your the, faux producer? Yeah, she's pretty. She's All a southern right. girl. Would you allow her to come on this show and then maybe go into a desert and fight with a bunch of other chicks for the right to be around me? No, no, no. Please don't ruin my brand new maybe producer. Please. <laughs> okay. please. All right. I'm going to still have my eye out on her tomorrow. Okay, okay. But, yeah, everybody's talking about this yeah. chick. Her name's Ruby Rose. Yep. She's Australian. Yep. She's got a short haircut. There's a photo of her at SR Show SXM on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. That guy just said... He's she's the hottest chick he's ever seen. She's the hottest lesbian anyone's ever seen. How about yeah, that? Because it seems like this is one of those girls that she's mainly hot. women are attracted to. Oh, I, I find hot her versus guy hot. Kind yeah, of I find her to be attractive because I like tattoos. I like attitude. I don't like tattoos. But the pixie haircut, that short haircut, has never done it's, anything it's, for it's me. It's beyond a pixie. The pixie's like Tinkerbell. That's right. like butch ass haircut. It is. Yeah. But she's got a very feminine face. Very. Oh, those lips. Shut up. Wait, wait. So we were gonna. I, I didn't want to talk about it today on the show because I have yet to get there in Orange is the New Black. You are not an informed host. Like so far, everything that I've heard that you guys talk about on your show called. Wake up with Taylor. Yeah. You don't know anything about any of it. I, I, I didn't pull this topic. Anyway, my point is, <laughs> is we didn't do we didn't do great. topic. We didn't do the topic today. We're gonna do it tomorrow. You fucking son of a bitch. Oh. But um, after the SR show has already trampled all well, over. Now I don't want to do it. Now I'm pissed. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm furious right now. Excuse me for being topical. But I'm mad at myself. And now Angie just impressed me all the more. Right. But point being is, rather than talk about it, right. I just went into a complete K hole. Google imaging this girl, and mm-hmm. I'm what I like fell in love with her. You she's, did, and she's engaged to this girl that's like very good looking, but not qu- more feminine, but not quite as beautiful as Ruby Rose is. But I'm obsessed with them. I think lesbians are where it's at in general. In general, so when you talk about getting 69, you want to get 69 by a girl, maybe specifically though. This is the only change, dude. Women don't seem to want feminine men. No, yuck. But... Pinch face, get out of here. Right. <laughs> but this chick, Ruby Rose, looks like a boy. Like, she looks like a very I feminine know, man. She, she looks like a, an underdeveloped man. Justin Bieber, who yes. I am disgusted by. But if you found out Justin Bieber had a vagina and some titty, <laughs> would you be like, oh my God, she's so revolutionary. Okay, here's what I think, okay? Yeah. Remember when Queer Eye for the Straight Guy came out? Like, I mean, a, I remember a decade when it, ago. Yeah, I right? guess. Okay, so gay guys, were, it was kind of still like, mm, gay man, wah. But when that, that show me. came out, I was yeah. just like growling at the TV. <laughs> gay guys, 
No, no, it was like e, like scared. Oh, oh, ah. okay. And I felt like that was a turning point when people were like, "Gay guys on TV, great!" And everybody was just like obsessed with gay guys. This is happening right now with lesbians because people people love gay guys, but gay guys even hate lesbians. Okay, that's what are you talking thing. about? Guys have liked lesbians forever. Well, not not girls. Like I've jerked off to lesbians tons of times. What? But but those are that. That's Paul, have you stuff. ever jerked off to a lesbian? Yeah, he says, sure, 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 sure I am. Sure. Paul is the fucking weirdest producer ever, because he does a very good job, and he gets a lot of stuff done. Yeah. I don't think, I've yet to see one emotion in his body. Oh, I like that. He's a, he's a, he's got cold, a renaissance man. he's got cold, dead eyes, and he's emotionless. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, but. I would cry in bed with you. He gets things done. <laughs> um. I just feel yeah. Like I don't think lesbians, lesbians are having a moment. I'm just saying. But lesbians have been fine for, no. and she's not, a, she's not a lesbian. She's even, it's like, yes, she is. Every day, it's another thing. And that's, the, this is the problem. So, it's too much. Two, too weeks, quickly. two weeks ago, Caitlin. It was Caitlin, and right before that, it was Jeffrey Tambor and Transparent and, and the transgender people. Yeah. We're having their moment. And it's like, okay, this is the transgender moment. Then, no time at all goes by, yeah. and it's the trans-ethnic moment. People are actually sitting there going, this Rachel woman, well, maybe she's trans-ethnic. Maybe that's okay. Now, this chick gets three days to be trans-ethnic, and you've got... What a freak, by the way. Yeah. Sam, you could look like a black person. We could make you look like a black person. You could be a Rachel. I'm tr- trans-ethnic, <laughs> Taylor, and I find that offensive. <laughs> I identify as black. Mike Tyson once referred to me as a black motherfucker. <laughs> and so that's, I identify as a black motherfucker. And that's how I identify myself. <laughs> Paul is showing sense. her the photo, which oh. is up at SR Show SXM of the side by side comparison of yours truly. Oh, wait. The original trans ethnic and Rachel Dolezal. Do you know? Trans ethnic person. Do you know who I look like? Who? <laughs> Have you seen my Instagram? <laughs> Okay, you do. <laughs> Taylor like- Strecker, under a certain light, bears a striking resemblance to Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> it's not quite as good. I'm not. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> who would you, oh, Paul? Okay. Who would you have sex with first, Caitlyn Jenner or Rachel Dolezal? <laughs> Dolezal. Me too. I think Dolezal. Oh, so, sorry, Taylor. It looks like Sam Roberts wins again. <laughs> but this Ruby Rose car- uh, girl—that's her name. Yes. She. Is a gender, not a gender, but a gender. Like yes. it's a word. It's a g e n d e r. Asexual, right? But right. a gender, very sexual, hypersexual. Yeah. Even everywhere she goes, she's exuding sexuality, but not a gender. Okay. So, but when Rachel Dolezal does it, because she's weird looking, you go, <laughs> you can't be trans ethnic. No, no way. Gross. But when Ruby Rose does it, because she's hot as balls. Yes. You're like, oh, okay, a gender is a thing. That's cool. Yeah. Like you needed. Uh, you needed a Laverne Cox, you needed a Caitlyn Jenner, you needed these people who look good as women yeah. and who have a lot of money to do right. it to come out. It wasn't that, uh, the, the black guy who was wearing a green wig who witnessed a car crash. Mm-hmm. He couldn't be the face of transgender America. No. But once you get it to a point where it's pretty, and you can masturbate to it, then it's acceptable. Okay, so you know that, um, I mean, uh, that lesbian, they're all lesbians. And Orange is the New Black, the, the really butch one with the tattoos all over her sure. arms, she's like chunky. Yeah. She disgusts me. <laughs> well, I mean, she's not a, a, an attractive, if she were a, not were a lesbian. Stra- if she were straight, she would still disgust me. But I'm just saying, I think that uh, this is a great thing. I think Ruby Rose, I think everyone th- should think she's hot. I think it's a great thing for the yeah, lesbian you know and but, agender but movement. That's exactly, that's a great point. <laughs> Because this other woman who's on Orange is the New Black, she's a little older. She literally looks like a big fat version of Ruby Rose. <laughs> she's a great actress. A big fat version. She's a great performer, but uh, she looks like a big fat version of Ruby Rose. Say big fat again. And she's had oh, she's had two seasons now yeah. of being a big fat inmate, <laughs> and, and nobody has said anything about any movement. Nobody has called her courageous. There haven't been any BuzzFeed top tens about her. No. But now this chick Ruby Rose shows up looking all hot yeah. and licking her girlfriend on red carpets and stuff. Ugh. And everybody's like, oh, I'm obsessed with her. Yeah. Why? Because she's hot. She's just so hot. I mean, we are a very vain society. It's sad. It's sad if you're beautiful. It's just a little bit easier. I know. I Trust me. I live it. <laughs> And people go, Sam, how can it be this easy for you? And I go, well, it's a lot of upkeep. And that's what people don't understand. 
It's a lot of watching what I eat. It's a lot of working out. <laughs> it's a lot of grooming. The glam squad is over at the house every morning. Uh, people don't get that part of it. They don't see that side. Uh huh. But that's part of what this show is all about. I knew it. Yeah. That's why we're friends. We're both. So you're very attracted to Ruby Rose. I think she's everything. I got I got stuck in this vortex of her today. It was slightly disturbing. So let me let me ask you because you always hear there are no like a heterosexual guy will never say another guy is attractive yeah. unless it's in like a funny bro way. Right. Like if it's a goof. Howard does. Howard Stern. Who does he find attractive? Has he said about me? John Stamos. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. <laughs> That's like when a girl's like, oh, I think Pamela Anderson is like, hot. Like, I mean, she's disgusting. Well, I'm talking about in like the 90s. <laughs> oh, whatever. Whatever. Lip liner. But it's not when a man says, I think John Stamos is attractive. It's like, okay, you have no opinion. Yes, I know. I know. I know. That's being like, you know. There's more. It's, it's that's, more like, that's like, who's your favorite band? Well, I really like the Beatles. Okay, great. Oh, yeah. So you're a person who has developed no taste in anything. Exactly. You just You just have figured out what's the inarguable thing to say. Yes. Um, but you don't hear guys that are like, I'm very attractive, attracted to that man. Right. I'm heterosexual. I'm just attracted to him. But girls can do that. Yeah, we can. So when you. Well, we can also hug our friends, sleep in the same bed I hug as our Paul friends. all the time. We can hold hands walking down the street. Friends do that. Friends do that. That's, that's very, very strange. Culturally, in some places, maybe, but not in America. Um, girls link arms all the time. It, it doesn't make any sense. When you look at Ruby Rose yes. and you're like, oh, my God, she's so hot. Yes. Do you actually think about her sexually or is it just uh, women appreciating no, women? No, I don't think about her sexually. I just like you like, don't want to see her vagina. Uh uh-uh. No, I do not. Okay. But I like I think when her and her fiance kiss, it's really sweet. But you don't get jealous when you see that. Well, I well, I get jealous of their connection. Ugh. <laughs> I don't understand. The, the female brain is like just such a waste of time. <laughs> That's that I quote. I gotta go. That is against my brand. That, that quote <laughs> can be taken away. Look, obviously, I'm a very <laughs> major appreciator of females. You I have are. women in here all the time. I love talented women. Yes. But the way you ladies think sometimes just makes no sense. <laughs> Lila in New Jersey. Hey, Sam. Hi. I gotta say, I've been listening to your transition into the Sam Roberts show. I've been listening to Opie and then Anthony and then you and Jim. And I'm going to say I'm very impressed with your show so far. Thank you very, very much. It's all Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just, you guys were talking about Ruby Rose, mm-hmm. and I'm a straight woman, and I think she's, I mean, I was binge watching uh, Orange is, the, is the, the New Black for the past week, and I am obsessed with her. I think she's so incredibly gorgeous. I went, you know, Google stalked her and <laughs> found her on Instagram and everything, and I think she's just incredibly good looking. So is this just somebody that you like? You look at and you recognize that they're good looking and you want to be like them and you want to have their life, or is it somebody that you yes. actually have some sort of sexual thing for? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I would, I would, um, it would be amazing if I was her and just living her life and just being so incredibly gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I would totally like being a straight woman saying I would be with this woman, I think shows a lot of volume as far as how attractive this woman is. Yeah, I mean, and that's what this this woman is driving. Thank you, Lila. Heterosexual women crazy, and they're making a lot of people question themselves. Yes. And she's hot enough that she can get away with calling herself a gender. Yes. Not a gender, but a gender. Yep. It makes, it's like every, that's why uh, you just have to decide now. Like, you have to get to the point now <laughs> where people can just call themselves whatever they want to call themselves. Yeah. And you can be whatever race you want to be. Sure. You can be whatever sexuality you want to be. You can weigh however much you want to weigh. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter to me. I weigh 95 pounds in that case. And if that's how you identify yourself, <laughs> I identify as a 95 pounder. <laughs> and that's just, that's me. But I mean, I can't believe the amount of, uh, of internet press Ruby Rose is getting. I love it. I think it's so fantastic. I think it's great. It does always weird me out that women have these uh, ideas of attractiveness. Like, like You don't find her attractive? I mean, I do. I find her attractive. But, like, I, I don't know. There's, just, there, there's just something that almost seems non-sexual about her to me. Like, she doesn't seem like a person. Oh, my God. But she's ridiculous less in bed. I don't think she's attracted to men whatsoever. Right. And the fact that there is... A lot of people don't realize this. I have a dick and balls. Oh, what? And so I immediately... Yeah, that's right. That's right. Show your car. All right, here it is. <laughs> Listen, I do. It's there. You have to look closely, but it is there. <laughs> and like knowing that, she doesn't strike me as a person that would enjoy that. 
No, but that. So, so I'm kind what? of taken outside of it. I'm like, well, whatever then. So she's off limits. So you're just not interested. Like I, I find. Oh my god, gay men, hot gay men, drive me insane. In really? Insane. Yes. What's because they look like Ruby Rose? They look like women. No, they don't. They look like men. Beautiful Ralph Lauren model men. Huh. Uh huh. I was a. Uh, there's this a uh, bar in, in the city, and it, it, it's a show tune bar. And I'm not gonna say the name because it's my favorite place in the world, and I don't want anyone coming there and bugging me. Well, so I famous. guess I guess life as a celebrity must be so <laughs> tough for you, Taylor. <laughs> Yeah, I go there and I sing show to the Judy Dench, okay? Judy Dench is there? Uh, Judy Dench is there! Dame Judy Dench? The Dame. I would and love to see that. she came over to me and said that she loves singing to my eyes. Should we be lesbians? Yes, we should. I guess... In that, but see, if 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 Sir Ian McKellen came up to me and was like, Sam, like I love the way you sing. Should we make out for a little while? Judy Dench is straight, by the way. Even for Magneto... <laughs> I go like, I don't think so, dude. I don't want to do that. Oh, I would totally kiss Judy Dench, but she doesn't want to kiss me. She had her boyfriend with her. Whatever. Anyway, point being is, though, that there's gorgeous gay guys that come here or yeah. to this place I go to, and I, like, I'll like i let them like kiss me all over my face. Like, you would. Are you ki- yes! Even knowing, it's like, this is as far as it's going to go. Yes. It's forbidden fruit. Yeah. There's something about that, maybe. Yeah. You're just going to go to Stacy, but she hung up. Listen. I still want to get to some other stuff. I want to talk to you about Donald Trump. Oh, right. So I'm going to take a quick break. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to be back with a whole lot more. We're going to talk about Donald Trump. Maybe we'll talk a little more about Ruby Rose. Yeah. So much to get into with Taylor Strecker here. You can hear her every morning on Wake Up With Taylor, which is on the Stars channel. Like six to nine, right? Yeah, six so to nine early. a.m. Eastern Standard Time. A nice little, a nice little something for your uh, morning commute. Yeah. Um, and you can follow her on Twitter at Taylor Strecker. Don't forget to follow the show at SR Show SXM on Twitter. And we'll be right back with more Sam Roberts Show. Hope Neil Young doesn't mind that I'm using this. Welcome back to Sam Roberts Show. Here's my thing. Taylor Strecker is here. We're here every day. At uh, noon, Eastern Standard Time on OB Radio, XM 103, Series 206. What a great show today has been. If you've missed any of it, make sure you listen to On Demand at SiriusXM.com slash On Demand. I truly believe 100%. Because this came up yesterday when we were talking about Donald Trump running for president. And we heard Rocket in the Free World was on. Uh-huh. Somebody called the show and said there's no way Neil Young's going to be okay with that. I 100% believe that Donald Trump used a song that he knew he wouldn't be allowed to use because it's just another headline for the Donald. Yep. He 100% knew that he was going to get in trouble for using the song, but he said that's just extra publicity. So if nobody says anything about my speech, which they will, mm-hmm. at least I'll have the song thing. Oh, yeah. That's he, so him. He knows how to get people talking. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Jeff in Oklahoma. What's going on, Jeff? Hey, Sam. You have these uh, uh, people on from different morning shows and stuff, and they always say the name of the show and who they are, but they never give the uh, station number. Well, not everybody is yeah. professional as primetime Sam Roberts, but <laughs> but Taylor Strecker, you can hear her every morning from 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wake Up With Taylor, which is on Stars 109. Sirius XM 109. Yep. See, uh, we're the literally... This is the this and Opie show. We're the only shows left that have to give two channels every time we try to plug something. Ugh, it's the worst. So stupid. I was there for a while. Let's go to Jay. Jay, you're on Sam Roberts show. Hey, thanks for taking my call. I, it's I my pleasure. Just flipping through some channels, I haven't uh, checked you guys out before. Really enjoying your show. It's fucking great. I, I was, I like everybody else, kind of laughed off the Donald's uh, announcement as president, but then I got to really thinking about it. In the past three presidents. Uh, really beginning with Clinton and then Bush and then Obama. We've, everybody's been talking about how they've had to raise so much money and how they're so beholden to special interest. Mm-hmm. And I think people forget that we're electing a president. We're not electing a king. So things like, <laughs> yeah, I love that. Uh, that Donald Trump is saying that, yeah, because no, everybody else is worried about special interest, but I've got my own money. It's like, Donald, exactly. you can't just spend your own money as the president. Why not? He's like a well, sugar no, daddy. No, he's, he's, I think where he's saying uh, his own money, I think he's talking about for funding his campaign. Because <laughs> when, you, when you look at it, the governing, if you go back to the promises Obama made, you go back to the promises that Bush made, they all... Campaign promises are one thing, but then when you get in the reality of government, I'm getting ready to retire after 20-plus years in the military, and the reality of government is 
not much changes from president to president. Yeah. Right. So then you have to get into the campaign money and influence peddling. And the way you gain influence is by donating money. Right. So if you don't have to go out and beg for money, then logically you're not you're not going to be beholden to special interest. And and it's really made me maybe give him a second look as a, as a potential presidential candidate because all the things that I care about, the way the military is treated, education. All uh, the way our school systems are run, that sort of stuff is handled at the local level. So if you're going to vote, vote local. Dude, he's bringing uh, back so the American that, dream. There's no right. way. There's no way you can't vote for Donald Trump. I'll vote for Donald Trump. Why are you going to vote for Donald Trump? Because he'll make everything gold leafed. <laughs> yeah, he will. Because everything will just be tacky. Tacky mirrors. When he's the president, mirrors for everyone. Here's what we need: mirrors on the ceiling. <laughs> Go ahead and put them up. Listen to this. Is, this is Donald Trump quotes. I, I, I could listen to them all day. Yes. Uh, Donald was on Fox and Friends this morning. Ugh. We have an incompetent president. We have pundits that sit around and, you know, theorize all day. And, oh, Donald Trump shouldn't be in the race. I mean, he built one of the great companies, one of the great real estate companies mm-hmm. of the world. And I don't qualify. But some third rate senator that hasn't done a thing qualifies for an election. Give me a break. <laughs> I agree with the man. Some career politician deserves to be a politician, but not an architect. I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way he just takes logic and just kind of wraps it around. He got me. He, he got did. me hardcore. Yes. He did. Look. He's I was, a success. He is a success. I trust people with money. You do. Wait, scratch that. No, I, I take it back. No, you did at one point. <laughs> no, but. he is self-made. Well, his dad was a real estate guy. What? <laughs> yeah, no, Donald Trump's dad was a real estate guy. Well, he's a trust fund baby? His dad had money. Well, let's talk, I mean, Donald Trump money or... Well, Donald Trump money is <laughs> insane. Donald Trump went and, and when he announced he was running for president yesterday, yeah. he also announced that his assets were worth over $9 billion, $200 million. That's incorrect. Donald Erroneous. Trump is crediting himself as a 9.2 billionaire. <laughs> I am a 9.2 billionaire. <laughs> yeah. No, don't worry, guys. I've got 9.2 billion dollars to back me well, up. He could help the country out if he was the president. If he had 9.2 billion, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that would take a nice chunk out of the deficit. Yeah. But so I don't think anybody has Donald Trump money because he set his facts and figures and the way he does his math is so mysterious. <laughs> Here's a deal. We're we're poor shit right now and we suck as a country. You know, mm-hmm. we're weak. We are. I thought you just meant me and you. <laughs> Definitely us. But I just feel like anybody with any sort of money savvy, come on in. Come you like on that. in. That's why I'm all about Hillary, because when Bill was in office, mm-hmm. he crushed it. The economy was booming. Right. So you know what? It if Bill can help Hillary, I don't even care. So you're crediting Bill Clinton with the dot-com boom and everything? Yeah, I give it to him all. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're sitting there going, okay, so if Hillary's president, Bill would just tell her all the secrets that he did. Yeah, while well, he's not inhaling marijuana and playing the saxophone. Right. Yes. And he can inhale marijuana and play the saxophone because he's only the first lady man. Yes, he can now. He's Go the wild. male first lady. It's and not... also the Easter egg hunt. You know, right. Very he, important. He's, Pick the eggs. He figures all that out. <laughs> he says, like, like, dirty words on the eggs. I thought it'd be funny. <laughs> Hillary, have a sense of humor. <laughs> Billy, you're on Sam Roberts' show. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, nobody's talked about the fact that uh, Donald Trump filed for bankruptcy once or twice. Yeah, did you know that, Taylor? I don't know anything, by the way, just so everybody knows. No, I did not. We did. Yes, Donald Trump filed for oh, bankruptcy. Oh, we filed for bankruptcy every single second of the day. That's true. We don't have any money. We so country. Donald Trump knows how to... I thought you were talking about us again. Yeah, I know. Donald Trump knows how to rebuild from a bankruptcy. Yes. That's even more of a credit to him. We need that. Here's the reason that I said you have to vote for Donald Trump yesterday. Oh, you did? We're so like-minded. Yes, I did. (laughs) Because one man who's just a citizen, who has no political power whatsoever, is a strong enough man to have forced a sitting president to turn over a birth certificate to prove that he was born in this country. Good point. And who was that man? Obama. And who was the man who forced him to do it? That other guy. The Donald. <laughs> it was the Donald. That other the guy. The Donald forced him to do it. You know what the Donald did? Yeah. Donald Trump became the alpha male next to the president of the United he States. He mounted him. He mounted him. <laughs> Dave, you're on Sam Roberts' show. What do you call him, Jim? Hey there, uh, some great points. I love the point about he doesn't have to make money, so he won't take it from special interest. But mm-hmm. 
Uh, here's why he won't win. Tell me. Um, the dumbasses in this country have been brainwashed into attacking wealth, uh, income inequality. I mean, Hillary Clinton's going around, you know, she wants to push through early voting, and she's spinning it and saying it that, oh, they don't want blacks to vote, they don't want women to vote, and how she can do that and lie, and it has nothing to do with that. And But people believe that, and people are stupid, and they go for the novelty of, you know, someone I mean, like Hillary versus someone that's smart. They try I, to wealth things. I do have to tell you, Dave, and I appreciate the call, I do think that there are some tricks that Donald Trump does to convincing stupid people that he's better than he actually is. Yeah. And Donald Trump knows how to use his words. People believe his hair is real. You don't think so? <laughs> Look, Taylor, I've got fabulous hair. I've proven it's real time and time again. People say I have a wig. They're not terribly successful people. <laughs> Jimmy. Sammy, what's going on, buddy? Cold chilling. Cold chilling. You know, the Donald's actually filed for bankruptcy three times. I didn't even know you could file for bankruptcy three times. This oh, man yes. has dug himself out of more holes. Impressive. But you want to know why he always comes out smelling like a rose? It's because the banks are so into him they can't afford to let him fail. Look, banks Here love me. I come in. I wear a nice suit. <laughs> come in here. I'm the Donald. How are you? Yes, I'm, I'm richer than shit. I'm yeah. a hot piece of ass wife. But all kidding aside, he would be very good as like a secretary of commerce to promote uh, uh, you know, growth in the country. Yeah, maybe, but you know what? Donald Trump don't answer to nobody. So if he's not the top <laughs> spot, he's coming for that number one spot. Sean in Tennessee. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Great to hear you. I've been I've been listening since your first after show. Thanks, pal. Um, it's awesome. Anyway, uh, I'm just wondering, what do you think uh, Trump is going to rename the White House when he's in there? I think... He's going to sit down in that White House, and it's going to be called the Trump House, or the White Trump. And there's going to be a big T-R-U-M-P plastered on the roof of, of that building. Paul, I want to try something new. Go t Take your notes. Go over to that microphone. And I want you to tell me, give me a list of what we ran down today. Specifically, like, uh, you know, skip the, skip the lame stuff, but just go for, like, the, the funny stuff, like you told me during the break, uh... The, the, the Taylor did. Today we talked about 69ing. Uh, wait, is it? Taylor's life, uh, life shift. I need you to be a more clearer reader. I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> I understand. Uh, so let's see here. You hate guys who flat out say what they want. You hate big dicks. <laughs> you got hemorrhoids from stress. You slept in the bathtub. You went to urgent care. You don't do drugs anymore. <laughs> uh, you cried after sex. Uh, you're college crazy now playing fifth flip cup and beer pong and then we got into the justice stuff. <laughs> there it is that's the list <laughs> that's my list with paul oh jesus that's our new segment it's called the list oh yeah 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 that's what we do every day <laughs> here on sam roberts show taylor thank you so much for being here thanks for having me babe this show is fantastic well it's only half as good as wake up with taylor which is on every morning every morning on stars sirius xm 109 from six to nine on the east you can also get her on Twitter and Instagram, at Taylor Strecker. Um, you can on-demand it, please. Right. Go to SiriusXM.com slash on-demand. Listen to her show. Listen to my show. Have yourself a good laugh. It's really a great time. Uh, and in the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter, at SRShowSXM. We also have a SoundCloud page. Yeah. I posted the whole bit that Nicole and I did yesterday. <gasps> the minute we found out Donald Trump was running for president, yeah. we went on the air. Nicole didn't even know. Oh, my God. So all that is up at SoundCloud.com slash SRShowSXM. And everything's linked on the Twitter and everything. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow here on Sam Roberts Show. Thanks, Taylor. Thank you, babe.